plight and struggle of black people in America. As you know, on Sundays, we do our prominent black people series. And today, as always, we have a special guest. Today, we have Dr. Candace Lucas Blesso. She is an internationally recognized expert in the areas of leadership, innovation, diversity, and equity. She is the Chief Global Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer of the Action Research Center in Dallas, Texas. Prior to joining the Action Research Center, <clears throat> Dr. Candace Lucas Blesso served as professor for the Yonok University in Lamping, Thailand. Dr. Blesso also led international initiatives and in organizations such as Bank of Thailand, Bain and Company, Microsoft, Qatar University, Hong Kong University Science and Technology and Abu Dhabi Department of Education and Council. Also, Dr. Kansas, Lucas Blesso received her doctorate in education from the University of Southern California. And Dr. Candace Lucas Blesso holds a master's degree from Southern Methodist University. And she also has a bachelor's degree from Bella University. Now, <clears throat> having said all of that, <clears throat> before we introduce our guests, it reminds me of something that I've said for decades, for sure, and I believe it yet still. I believe that the world was God's gift to man. And I also believe that the black woman was God's gift to the world. With that being said, without further delay, our special guest, Dr. Candace Lucas Blesso. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lorenzo Gray, for that amazing introduction. And um, I just, I have to come back again when you do an introduction like that. It's just, <laughs> well, uh, let me say just one more thing, because, <laughs> you know, I met you uh, on Arthur Eric Johnson's uh, podcast, uh, The Switch Within. Mm -hmm. And then I went and saw you speak at the African American Museum at Fair Park. Yes. And I'm not sure which event, but it was one of those events where I heard you say, I love being black. <laughs> and you won my heart when I heard that because, you know, I've been around people in academia before, black people, but I've never heard black academia excellence talk like that. And I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, was. Also, well, it's true. I do love yeah. black people and I love being black. And I'm Absolutely. thankful. Oh God, that God, that God made me the way He did mm -hmm. and as well. So, absolutely. Thank you for loving yourself. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what do you want to tell us? But I know you have so much to say to us. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I start? Like, oh my Ooh, God! I can imagine. Sorry. Where would you like for us to start? You know, we can. Um, well, if we're just going to uh, freelance, how about your one of your, because it could be hardly to pick one, what about your one of your favorite Black women in history? Oh, yeah. Okay, Ida B. Wells. Oh, yeah. Her, Ida B. Wells. Oh, of course, yeah, I know. <laughs> but, uh, but certainly, Ida B. Wells is one of my favorites, and she's one of my favorites because um, I think about how we, you know, we talk about um, different gifts that people have, um, and her gift was that of writing. 
Mm-hmm. But one of the things that she also knew how to do well that a lot of people don't talk about is that she knew how to collaborate with other people. Okay. And so uh, one of the relationships she had was with um, Madam C.J. Walker. And Madam C.J. Walker uh, was very well-to-do, very, you know, of course, she created many um, different elements, like within beauty uh, for Black women, like the pressing comb and then different types of pomades and greases, yeah. and products and things like that. But although Ida B. Wells had this great idea about, you know, sharing important information out throughout our country for, about Black people and connecting with them and letting them know um, about the anti-lynching campaign, right? About her anti-lynching campaign, she still needed some resources to do that. And yes. connected up with the sister, right? And said, hey, mm-hmm. you know, Madam C.J. Walker, this is what I have in mind. And mm-hmm. connected up. And so when I think about things like that, um, it allows us to know that's how the sisterhood has always been working. And the right. brand, we've been supporting each other all along the way. Now, our history teachers who are white, who oftentimes write the books, may not include that part in there. But... Mm-hmm have certainly been working as a people, you know, sisters and brothers to support one another. And so when I think about Ida B. Wells and it's certainly her anti-lynching campaign, the the courage she had. And oh, yeah. Yes. You know, to, as you know, she was an investigative reporter as well. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that courage to, you know, to take this on and to share. And as you mentioned, to engage in this investigative reporting to Doing that ever too? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so, um, and then not only that, to connect with other Black people, you know, other intellectuals, and then right. other people just, you know, supporting other folk to help, you know, in, at, looking at it from a community standpoint. So, right. think about Ida B. Wells, I'm, I'm always just, I rejoice because... <laughs> She told the story of so many others, you know, and we tell her story today, but she was mm-hmm. a storyteller. She was right. a reporter. She was telling stories about this is what's happening to my people. You know, she was bringing attention, you know. So, did, you, did you know she started kindergarten in Chicago? In Chicago? I'm not surprised. I'm yeah. Not surprised. Nothing surprised me about our black greatness because we are <laughs> that magnificent people. It's just that not enough of us know about us. That's yes. what I think is a big part of the problem. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So when I think about women like Ida B. Wells, Madam C.J. Walker, um, yeah. it certainly inspires me. And I think that we need to continue to share those stories in the spirit of Ida B. Wells, right? To share. A- absolutely. But we need to recognize people that are still here like yourself, which I, I could tell you have this mighty spirit. But your credentials are immaculate. And <laughs> like I say, I've never seen anybody with your credentials that have your heart and love for Black people that will verbalize it. You see what I'm saying? Because sadly, we do have some people in you know, high esteem areas like yourself that care and love, but they're afraid if they verbalize it, they might get ostracized, yeah. something like that. You know, the way I look at it is that, you know, more than likely, whenever you see a Black person, you know, in any area, it's taking some type of work to get there. And so, um, you know, and and so when I think about even just my, you know, my journey, if it, if it had not been for my people, I wouldn't mm-hmm. be, able, you know, I stand on the shoulders of beautiful geniuses and con- uh, contributors to this society. And some of them are known and then some of them were not known, right? Correct, you know? correct they had to face but uh but certainly you know i feel like when you are in a position you're going to be people are going to look at you with a critical you know a critical eye you know with you know from that particular standpoint so Mm -hmm. might as well um you know certainly be authentic and for me um that's what you know i want people to to know who i am and know uh, what I'm about. So I generally, I like to stick to being a truth teller. Because if you tell the truth, you don't have to worry about <laughs> <laughs> remembering a lot. <laughs> well, the the oh truth doesn't change. <laughs> yeah, so I just I'll stick to the truth. And uh, 
and it works good for me. You know, it works. Right, right. So, and I'm thankful for that. But thank you so much again. And Absolutely. And, and see, when you were talking about the struggles of a success of a black person, it made me think of uh, John H. Johnson, the fellow that started Ebony and Jet magazine. He wrote a book titled Succeeding Against the Odds. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely uh, reflective of all of our successes in this nation as a people. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's why I love black people, too. You know, you think about no no other people, right, have gone through this type of genocide and treatment and survived uh, for generations. We think about slavery, right? And right, the, right. Um, the effect and the impact over generations, but to survive this peculiar system and this peculiar institution of slavery. And Chattel slavery at that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, and to continue to move forward as a people and to yeah. families and to make contributions. Um, I think it really highlights the resiliency, you know, of our people. Yeah, no um, doubt. You know, that we are special, you know, that, you know, that we are a special people. And, so, and we're not finished either. So, wow. <laughs> you know, we're on our way. I believe we're yeah. getting ready to unite uh, to the level that it will show the masses of our people that yes, not only we can do it, we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And when they see that perfect example, I think then the bandwagon people will get on board. Absolutely. You know? yeah. Absolutely. Because it is just, you know, as you continue to see, you know, um, there's so many things that are happening in our time period. But I believe, too, that we're going to continue to move forward, you know? And Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, and I do think that if I also believe, too, that, you know, to survive a certain type of evilness um, from previous generations, that says something, you know, it says something about a people. Absolutely. And, and I just believe that that, you know, that's really important for us to, you know, understand as we look back on our story to remember who we are, you know. Yeah, there's this author out of New York, uh, Rochester, New York, uh, Dr. Richard Williams. He, he wrote a book called uh, They Stole It, But You Must Return It. And oh. he says for Black people to uh, survive what we went through here and have any resemblance of sanity is a miracle in itself. Yeah. And I agree with that, brother, because that was so devastating. You know, so many horrible stories about the things that happened to our people. Like you say, our women, like uh, a situation I've read about where they would have a woman pregnant and tied to a tree or whatever, cut her stomach, take the baby out to put fear in everyone else. And I mean, how horrible could you be to want to do that to anybody, you know, anything? Yeah. So that's just one example of how horrific that was. Yeah. Some people don't realize it wasn't just work and whippings. It was terrible. So many things. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I think it also goes back to, once again, like not seeing uh, black you know? And I often think that during slavery, um, that was one of the elements that, and that, you know, as black people, as it relates to the interactions of white folks, they still deal with that. Like this concept of labor and of ownership, mm -hmm. owning people's work, you know, like it's not, no, you don't own someone's work. That's that person's work. <laughs> you know, it's like, you have to, you know, we, because, I mean, you know, because of the history of them owning black bodies. Right. And so right. today that oftentimes comes into play, that conversation comes into play about ownership and mm -hmm. owns, you know, work because of the the history and the taxation on the black body, you know. Wow, that's heavy. <laughs> it makes me think of a situation I read about with uh, Paul Robeson one time. He was in a restaurant or somewhere and there was a Caucasian guy with the same name and I forget the details, but it was something to where uh, the, the fella knew how prominent Paul Robeson was but he yet wanted to have a chance to rub it in his face about having that same name. Well, I guess your father was or grandfather owned by my grandfather. And mm -hmm. It stopped there. But, you know, there's going to be moments that there'll be situations and we have to deal with them in a way that we can be productive, stand strong and yet go home that night. Right. That's exactly right. That's exactly. We have to navigate, you know, through those yeah. really 
difficult spaces, right? And sometimes I say, even sometimes be prayerful about it, you know, like. <laughs> it's, like it's real, it's real. You know, um, as we kind of navigate, you know, as we navigate, but certainly. Thank you for yeah. that story in a while. So thank you for reminding me about that story. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, and you know, when you have so much knowledge in your head, you can't hold everything, right? <laughs> I've, I've, I've heard people tell jokes like, say, I forgot more than you'll ever know, something like that, but we can't hold it all, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and all that education you've been through, wow. I'm just proud to be acquainted with you and just know somebody that put in the work, still putting in the work, and just so in love with your people. And you know we're headed in the right direction. We're Excellent. going to unite. We have so many things aimed at us. Like you talked about our resiliency, and we are that people for sure. Absolutely. And I also want to lift you up too, Mr. Lorenzo Gray. I was so um, impressed, you know, when I was listening to uh, Eric Johnson talk about your volunteerism and, oh. and that right there is just to me, I think is something that we need to continue to highlight, you know, especially uh, what a great model you are for um, our community to mm -hmm. thank you <laughs> how you're pouring to others and to support other people. Um, yeah volunteer to lift up our children, you know, that goes without saying that that is like single-handedly, you know, the most, I think, you know, as we think about giving of one, is to mm. give one's time, you know, give of, of oneself. So right. much for that as well. Absolutely. Yeah, you're welcome. But you know, I feel so blessed to do it because you're talking about enjoyment. I have so much joy when I deal with those young people mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm great to get involved with some volunteering at the uh, Henry Wade Juvenile Justice System. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go get fingerprinted Tuesday. Okay. So that's another chapter of involvement. I just love people, but I'm so in love with children. That's yes. just so close to my heart. Yes. Yeah, I love them. <laughs> yeah. And they are, and the children are our future, you know? So for sure. For continue to them and think about what support them and let them know that you know that we're here for them you know that they're not on their own um, and volunteers i think volunteers are just that's why i say volunteers <laughs> that's, so, you know, that's really what's been the foundation many times within our black communities people just saying you know what stepping up was you know and saying i'm going to give in this way of my time right right special so, yeah. But, but you know what people will find if they will get involved in this volunteerism thing with the passion, whatever they have, maybe not everybody care about children, they care about something else. But people that care about children, but they haven't been volunteering, if they volunteer, they're going to find out that those children look at you, especially when you're a man showing up, a black man, they look at you like you're layered in gold. Oh. <laughs> and they make you feel so special and so appreciated. You want to come back? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, they do. I know they're so proud and thankful for you to come and support. And, and they don't have to know you. They be waving and speaking to you. Just you walking by in the hallway past your classroom. Yeah, and they show you they're thirsting for it. You know, absolutely. Wow, that is so amazing. But I love it. I did a career day recently in Oak Cliff, and wow, it was. I had a ball. It just felt so great because you know, with this pandemic, we couldn't do much of that. Mm -hmm. And while wow, I did like four different classes, fifth, fourth, third, and second, wow. and I had a, I had a great time. I I really enjoyed it. <laughs> well, that's great. That is, oh, great. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. you know, just so many more like you to continue well, to, um, to to pledge their time, you know, and commitment. Yeah. But I think more men are going to step up. You know, oh. I'm always optimistic. I'm realistic primarily oh. first, but. I'm, I'm very optimistic, but I believe in us, and I see some things going on behind the scenes. We're, yeah. we're headed there. Yes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We have some great uh, role models um, in our community, and I think people who are just sold out for our young people, and um, not only just sold out for our young people, but are willing to stand in the gap or whatever needed, you know? Um, right, and, and there's some people that just don't know where to go to get involved. They want yeah. to, but they don't know the avenue. So we just need to be more visual and vocal and, and just try to recruit sometimes too. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but I see the change in our people. We're growing. I see it. I feel yeah. it and everything else. <laughs> yes, yes. And all I have to say is just, you know, just I can't wait to just I'm enjoying being on the ride, but I just can't wait to see how it unfolds. I well, I hear what you're saying because me personally, I'm enjoying the ride a lot more. I know when we get there, that's going to be jubilant, but the ride is what I'm enjoying because I know it's coming. Within our lifetime, we live a reasonable lifetime. You know what I'm saying? Like 10 years and less. Mm -hmm. And that ride, I'm enjoying the ride more than anything, actually, yes. at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing it, knowing it, I'm loving that part. Yeah. <laughs> and I always have this thing that like I say to people, like allow God to surprise you, you know, mm. and, um, and that's one of the things that I had to learn how to do, even as like an academic, you know, because like sometimes they try to teach us like you're the one who knows it all. Mm. And I, no, that's that's not really that's something the majority practices. That's not really rooted in blackness, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't really do that. We say that it's the collective, right? It's the group. Right, and, right. Um, but to allow God to surprise us, to show us, you know, um, you can't believe, you know, you know, as we think about like the majority, because sometimes people have an agenda and I, and I will say that. And sometimes mm -hmm. the agenda is to paint a narrative of what we are not, but it's, you know, as I mentioned before, just, just being able to be on that ride and to see things unfold. I'm so excited and I'm so- I can imagine, yes. It's exciting for sure. <laughs> I'm loving it too. So yeah, uh, I appreciate you coming and you know, you can come anytime. All you have to do is okay. tell me. You don't have to ask, tell me this is your show. I'm your streaming device. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so congratulations on your son's graduation. I know that's a happy, proud moment for your family. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and I know people are like, Candace, but like you're in education and you see, but it is like when you see, it was so special. And uh, and I do believe that we should celebrate our children. We should absolutely. And we should celebrate our women. Like I believe in celebrating. And um, I'll never forget something my grandmother talked to me. She told me that, there's enough things in life that, you know, there will be hurdles or there are things that we will have to go through. So why not celebrate, you know, those things when we have an opportunity? And so I just want to let you know, Mr. Lorenzo Gray, that when, hey, when he walked across that stage, they heard Dr. Blesso's voice. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and I, made, I know you made sure your son heard your voice too. <laughs> I don't blame you. That's yeah. a one-time moment. You don't yeah. get it but once. So yeah, I don't blame you at all. And just like you said, something about pouring into the children, because I read so much about our people. I love our history and knowledge. But like Nat Turner, for instance, mm -hmm. you know, they talk so much about the end of what went down. But see, Nat Turner, when he was a child, mm -hmm. adults went to Nat Turner asking him for advice for their personal life when he was a child. So they had already groomed that turn to believe he was something special. Absolutely. You see? And he was a child then. That was before all that preacher Bible stuff. You see? Yes. Yeah. So, see, we need to know our story. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> that leadership, it takes place before we're, you know, we think about, like, leadership starts at 30 or 40. No, leadership starts right now whatever when that is when when you're ready and yeah. i'm ready you know like look at martin luther king when they did the bus boy car, he was 26. he was 26 years old <laughs> and you had all kind of older people involved right yeah 26 year old led the way <laughs> yeah so, <laughs> so hey being open to and celebrating and uh acknowledge our people and acknowledging our people you know um, mm -hmm. show that love publicly our community is layered in wealth. It's like layered. And I absolutely, and I, yeah. I, we don't yeah. see the wealth, but I see it. And I think a lot of folks see it as well because yeah. that's one of the reasons why we have gentrification and a lot of other things because other folks see that wealth in us, you know? Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And we've got to show our own, see, because sadly that gap between our adults and our children is way too big, you know? Because yeah. I've seen a lot. And that gap of men not being there. It's so interesting that if men just come once a week, a couple times a month, you can impact a child in a way that their whole life is improving. Yeah. You know, and it's so interesting that 
just that energy in a child, a human, but children definitely feel your energy. We all have energy, it's either positive or negative. Mm -hmm. And children definitely can feel you for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they know if they know if you love them or not. That's it. That's it. They certainly do. And uh oh, oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, so that, that's the joy. So see, I always be happy. I retired from working and all that stuff. And some people say they won't have nothing to do. I love volunteering with children. I always have something to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. That's right. That is so good. That's so absolutely. Good. So, yeah, I'm set. Set for life. <laughs> yes. What a great contribution. And um, mm -hmm. and you know, once again, as we just think about all of the you know great volunteers and people, and there's many, there's many, not as many as it should be, but there's many. You know, so many yeah. great people before us. Like Francis, okay, I've done a little stuff locally, bullhorn protests with county commission, all that, but mm -hmm. it was what some risk. It could have been a Caucasian crazy come with a shotgun, blow us away, and keep going, whatever. But even then, with that possibility, it was nothing like when Martin Luther King and them was marching. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. It was so much easier for us, even though it took some work. And I would be out there on that horn getting tired, and I would think of Harry Tubman. And I would get a second win every time. Yeah. Every time I thought of Harry Tubman, I yeah. would get that second win. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, we got to put in the work. They put in the work. But the work is easier and easier. Look at now. All we have to do is unite. We don't have to fight. All we have to do is unite. We just have to unite. We have to unite and operate. You feel me? Operating our everybody has a gift. Operating your yes. gifts and unite. Absolutely. You feel me? So yeah. I mean, I said this one time too. Imagine this country with no blacks here. <laughs> what would it be like? Goodness be gracious. Different. Yeah. You know, the world <laughs> has leveraged our style and our innovation and our um, you know, grandiose demeanors and you know the things that we do the world has leveraged it you know people look yeah. at our style they look at the things that we create and they you know the world has benefited not only from the united states now, the united states is one of the largest powers it certainly has from the standpoint of like as we think about a variety of different you know in mainstream right but right. um that leveraging though you're able to see just like it, the way that we people wear their clothes you know music um the influence of even language you know across mm -hmm. not only here in the united states but also looked upon in the world and so there's so many connections that we have too i think to the continent of africa and so many countries there and so i was talking to a dear colleague of mine and uh, I started singing. I forgot something happened. I started singing. <laughs> he was like, that's African. <laughs> he was like, yes, that's African. He was, I was like, absolutely. You know, we rejoice. And I was like, yes, absolutely. But just those connections to the, you know, to the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. And um, as a people, how we've been able to provide so much to this country. You know, really, you know, when you... When I go to Washington, D.C., sometimes I'm asked to speak at, you know, different places, even at Penn State, you know, just different places. And I look mm -hmm. at the architecture right. of some of these buildings. And they were built by slaves, mm. built by black folk, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so but and so there are physical things that we've contributed to, like physical structure. Right. A lot of things that were not physical, but they saw us do it and say, oh, I, you know, that's that's interesting. I'm gonna, you know, I wanna try. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Influence has been so strong in this in this country. Absolutely. We're that people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and once we unite, wow, we'll thrive rather than merely survive. That's real talk too. That's what happened. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. And it's happening. Oh, trust. Yeah, it's certainly happening. Oh yeah. So people need to hear and see this reinforcement that we know is going on. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I want no, too, there are a lot of, you know, brilliant uh, black uh, folk who are operating in their gifts and um, connecting and supporting one another. And that sisterhood and that brotherhood in that community um, is strong, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. 
Um, and that's one of the reasons too why like, you know, sometimes people will be like, well, oh, where did you go to school and X, Y, and Z? But the reality of it is all that we have, you know, it certainly belongs to our ancestors. You know, if we were not, uh, if, if it were not for our ancestors, if it were not for the people that came before us, mm -hmm. uh, as you talked about Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King, Sojourner Truth, um, you know, even the slave that um, the doctor, uh, cre he performed all the things that dealt with gynecology on this particular slave, right? Mm, right. Uh, gave those um, types of services to white women. Um, you know, everything that we have uh, built on the backs of our people. And so, right. I mean, with that, it's like, you know, I think about it sometimes, when I'm in these spaces where I'm by myself from the standpoint of, it may not be as many with me, but mm -hmm. I'm never by myself. <laughs> right, right, not, right. Be right? Like my people are with me, I'm never by myself. And that's the great thing about being black. Like, <laughs> it's a great thing about being, being black. Yeah, because yeah. And be like, how is she, you know? Because I'm a black woman and that's, and it's, and my joy is connected not only to myself, but it's also in the spirit, in the collective group of blackness and people who have come before me. So sorry. Uh, ancestors, absolutely. And, and I think if more of us would have the mindset of whatever we do, let's look at it like, how would our ancestors feel about that? Yeah. If we thought like that on almost every action we made, wow, how fastly we would improve in such a short period of time because we just got to get that mindset. I remember when I hadn't heard anything about ancestral concepts, but mm -hmm. actually over at Pan African Connection at Bandelli's, I had found out decades ago. And I noticed when you understand your blackness and your connection to your ancestrals, it can have a major difference. I think that's why I'm so bold and courageous because I know about our people. I yes. struggle, our everything. And that lets me know. I'm standing if no nothing else stands, you know, out of the love for your people, the ancestors that made this possible for us. Yeah. You see. Yeah. So yes. I mean, just imagine chattel slavery till today. That's more progress than from where we are to where we need to be. That's oh wow. That's so that's powerful. That's powerful. And it's truth too. It's true. See? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like <laughs> I watch movies too, like on the five heartbeats. We on our way. <laughs> So I, I really, really appreciate you uh, giving me your time, us here, the plight and struggle of black people in America. And wow, it's just, I'm going to be smiling the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much, Mr. <laughs> so Gray. And I just want to say that, you know, as we think about um, our people, you know, um, our ancestors are holding us up. We stand on the backs um, of our, you know, of our family, of our ancestors. And the pressure is off, you know, because it is a group. You know, it's not about the singular. Like, I don't right. have it is about the group. And they're holding us up. And all we have to do is unite and operate in the gifts that we have. And so, one man water, one man plant. What is it? One man. <laughs> I know one, I know one, one, I don't know if it's the same link, but one, one man's trash is another man's treasures. I've heard that. That's true. I'm just like, one man planting, one man water, you know? And water. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's that's kind of like that fish thing. Don't give them some fish, show them how to fish. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. One of those deals. But yeah. wow. I tell you, it's, it's been a pleasure and look forward to the next time. Absolutely. I look forward to coming back again. And yeah. hold the torch of wisdom and knowledge for our people. God bless you so much, Mr. Lorenzo. Thank you very much. You have a great day. Okay. <laughs> wow, that was wonderful. And I want to thank the sister again uh, for coming, being on the show. And as you already know, we love each other. We're going to keep loving each other. And we're united. <laughs> Wow, 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 I love my people. And we'll cry. Brother, man, we survive.